Welcome to another edition of the Ghana Web Real Safety Campaign Series. My name is Lord Harris Edwasari. Today we are the Ghana Police Headquarters, specifically the Surveillance and Monitoring Centre. As you are well aware, quite recently, the MTCD, or essentially the Ghana Police Service, launched this centre to monitor the way things are happening in the country. So they are using the centre to, as it were, help the road safety campaign and also monitor activities, criminal activities that have been going on to help curtail it. We're speaking to the Director of Public Affairs and the person of Superintendent Alexander Bing is going to give us more details. Do stay. After the break, we continue. Uh, here with Superintendent Alexander Bing and he's going to take us through how essentially everything works. Superintendent, thanks for doing this with us. Thank you very much. So, give us a brief background. Is that these ordinary CCTV cameras which is capturing things in the country or it's something more? Uh, thank you very much. I think for the opportunity and first of all, mm -hmm. police thrives on certain things, okay. certain basic things, that there should be law, mm -hmm. there should be evidence that supports that somebody has committed, break, broken that law mm -hmm. or committed an offense. Yeah. And there should be a, a law that will not exempt the person. And therefore, Evidence is always very critical when it comes to policing, service delivery. Mm -hmm. And you know, traffic is one of the operational support systems that uh, police enforce on road laws to uh, protect lives and property. And uh, incidents of road crashes as a result of indiscipline, in other words, non-compliant with the road laws, is causing the country so much and it is in light of this among others that uh, as part of our efforts mm -hmm. the police administration together with other stakeholders have come up with this uh, back office support system uh, which is a, a monitoring and surveillance center of Ghana police where you see uh, police officers have monitors who are glued to uh, the monitoring devices and looking at real time occurrences on our roadways across the country okay. in all police jurisdictions. Okay. How, how is this different from the CCTV cameras we have installed across the country and the backstab you have that monetized. Is there any difference? I think we, we, we don't see any CCTV here. Mm -hmm. What you see is that we have a back office yes. where real time information okay, of movement of vehicles, goods and services mm -hmm. and persons of, on foot walking along or across our routes in Ghana okay. are being monitored. As to the devices that are deployed, it is right. And these are not hidden devices that the state has deployed. But what is important for you and I, where we are standing, mm -hmm. is that police is able to receive real-time information of which we can, uh, what do you call, decipher, and then process into something of evidential value in order to know who has committed what offense? Okay. Where has the offense been committed? So that whoever has come in contact with the law or has breached the law will be forthcoming. Because if you see police officers here, mm -hmm. they are more or less like investigators, gathering evidence and processing it. Because after here, when you see that you have not packed properly, mm -hmm. if you observed that you have run red lights. If you observed that you are driving dangerously, facing oncoming vehicle and all that, your number play to give you up. And okay. consistent with the law, we will easily get your identification mark on your vehicle. Proceed quickly 
to the license officer who is mandated under regulation one of li 2180 mm, to keep vehicle register of all vehicle owners at driver and vehicle license authority and with this the police investigator is equipped with information on who committed what offense at where in ghana as we are watching it live okay. and that is i think what is that's what is important so that all road users particularly vehicle owners and motorist drivers and pedestrians on foot or walking along an road, who know that during the day during the night mm -hmm. when it is rainy because you saw certain areas in ghana it is <laughs> rainy at this time yes. even when it is dark at dawn when it is foggy police eyes are there through the electronic lenses of cameras that are deployed by Ghana around the country. And this should serve as deterrent, first of all, to motorists. Mm -hmm. And then it should be a warning to those vehicle owners who are absent. Because we have absentee vehicle owners. So that if it has to do with training, if it has to do with admonishment and warning to their drivers mm -hmm. to be careful when of the vehicle they will give to and who to give to and if there's a training gap they give it to them because police is observing okay and we are there with you and you can never slip through our hands so all and that these, is what is important okay so yes. all, all these cameras are across the 16 regions of ghana yes, i said police we even go beyond 16. i think you are late <laughs> yeah? okay and you know that central region uh, yes. has been defecated into uh, two, two yeah. now we have uh, central east yeah. the capital the command is at kaswa is another case yes. you know accra greater accra is divided we have Tema region and all that so we are really like uh, 17 police regions yeah. across the country and with this, these lenses are everywhere. Are, are you with me? Yeah. Uh, and they are functioning and they are beaming real-time information to police officers at this monitoring and surveillance center. Are you, are you able to give us a rough figure of the number of cameras installed? I think with the, 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 the details, mm -hmm. uh, so we've already given it out that we're not looking at anything less than 3,000. Uh, you see what I'm talking about? We are, we are looking at for more. But uh, what, what is important is that where there are critical occurrences that normally impacts on lives and properties in connotated jurisdictions mm. and settlements, critical junctions, runabouts, can you give us some examples or, or names? Oh, this one is a busy thing. You know, talk about, but, but you know, talk about but, critical intersections, for example, in Accra. Mm -hmm. You know them. Uh, Akoje will be one. Mm -hmm. uh, Kwame Nkrumah Circle will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, Tetekwashi will be there. Uh, if you even look at the crossroad at uh, Zongo Junction, uh, Riz Crossroad, uh, T Junction at Adentan, and the one that also intersect at uh, R40 at the old Adentan barrier. And, 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 and when you even go to uh, uh, Kumase Tech, where we have the Fort Bridge, I hope you know the place. Uh, if you go to uh, Asokwa Interchange. Okay. And uh, uh, almost, and let me also reduce it to even towns centers yeah mm -hmm. or original capitals wherever you see uh, these physical deployed uh, cameras and you see them on the national polls the devices you go to who at the banco area they are they are replete in kumasi township it is there little kumasi if you come to the castle and this environment and all that you see some the cape coast is it not obvious? Okay. Secondly, Takra, what about there? 
and you go to Tamale, Was, the mice, and, and so on all major cities where we have national installation and persons and their properties, i.e. vehicles, goose, drivers, pedestrians, and all that. These devices are there in order to ensure that people use our roads or public places with decorum okay. and high responsibility, with protection of lives and property huh? mm -hmm. by one another, hmm? be manifested around the club, okay. diurnally and nocturnally. And this is critical because it is sending clear signal that in the traffic stream, there's always the need everywhere in the world by the traffic police and the police system to deploy technological devices that will first increase sense of detection. Okay. Okay. That's the first principle. Okay. Because human police cannot be everywhere all the time. So we need technological intervention to increase sense of detection. And you don't end it there. You back it up with increased sense of detection. I mean. okay. huh. And apprehension. So that when you see apprehension, it is that you see a back office populated with well trained police officers who run on shift, observing the monitors to detect who, where, when, how, gather same evidence, and make the evidence functional by pushing it to processing teams or investigators that are ready, waiting for the offender, and to take him or her through the investigative process for court. And that is why, where you see all these deploy systems, where people are committing, mm. police officers are waiting. Because with this information fed to them, back it up with personal calls to vehicle owners who have given these vehicles that people are using to commit these road crimes and road offenses on the road, mm. to avail them at designated processing desk centers across the country. Okay. And the offenders are being processed and are being charged and are being put before motor courts. Mm. Uh, if you get what I'm talking about. Yeah. And therefore, it is not only detection, but apprehension and then sanction. Because when they are sent to court, the court adjudicate and sentences and all that. Yeah. So that they convict and they sentence. And that is what we have here. And therefore the importance of it to all of us is that as VQ owners we must admonish our motorists, yeah. those who are handling our vehicles, let's, let's, to be compliant of the rule law. That's true. Otherwise, when you come, we come on the road as we are here and we see you. We will come after you and you will always have a day with us at the court. Yes. And the court will definitely also engage you. And at what by our experience, because these are strict liabilities, because it comes with evidence, hard or photographic evidence, Undeniable. video evidence, yeah. who doesn't call for elaborate investigation after this, the courts have also been positioned mm -hmm. to deliver fair judgment and has been convicted and has been imposing appropriate sentences consistent with the Act 683 and LI 2180 of 2004 and 2012 respectively. Mm -hmm. And we believe of this more people will be deterred. Few people will be seen to be committing. And you will begin to see 
its impact in terms of reduction in incidence of uh, road accidents and such behaviors that compromise lives and properties on our roads. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the backroom stuff that I have here. Um, what is the personnel size? Well, I think we have, police have adequate personnel who run shifts for us. For the monitoring? Oh, yes. So you can see yeah. currently you have over 12 with supervisors. Okay. But there's a, there's a few police, one person cannot do the work. Okay. Anyway. You, 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 mentioned, yes. you mentioned that they work on shifts. So at the, a shift, about 12 to 15 people well, are In the morning, uh -huh. they will come. Okay. And uh, in the afternoon, others will come. Well, yeah, you see, human beings also have guaranteed right to work, yes. as was guaranteed by the you know, League of Nations in 19. In 1990. So it's a, it's a right that police also cherish mm -hmm. and, and allows personnel to refresh so that work can be perpetrated around the clock. Mm -hmm. And it's also communicating to uh, road users that <laughs> police eyes are open. Yeah, are you with me? Yeah. So we are monitoring it to ensure that where the roads are busy, we are there. Know that. Uh, we, we, we are not only here, others are also patrolling, isn't it, okay. in the communities. So there's that connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that as we are doing the traffic, we are leveraging on this to also uh, look out for criminals who may be doing other things other than, other than uh, uh, road traffic offences. And it is all in the interest of ensuring that we enhance uh, the protection of life and property particularly in our communities, on our roads, and all that. So, 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 so that is something that uh, all the media is expected to do is to play a role of admonition uh, those who are patronizing your platforms and your networks to be rest assured that uh, the, 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 the public places uh, have been tightened with the view of enhancing public health and safety and therefore people can step out without fear and uh, go about their routines mm. and, and look out and also report misplant. However, we are also here to back them up that we have uh, a capacity to observe certain areas that are not trouble free and we, we are here to also uh, identify, pursue, apprehend, and then process and prosecute those who will take the law into their own hands. Okay. As it is real time, in the event that maybe some accident prone area, some an accident occurs and from the way the thing occurred, no one's able to call an ambulance or help, are uh, you able to make calls from your base on what you've seen to call for help? Obviously. Obviously. If there are emergencies, we are here. Whilst we wait for people to, we have given information to Ghanaians mm -hmm. to contact us on 191, 112, Even the back office number 0302 7739906. Okay. If we have the capacity, to observe it in real time. And do we wait for a third party? No. <laughs> we easily will then trigger the emergency systems to an appropriate agency, i.e., if it is National Ambulance Service, we do. If it is that we need to re require a towing vehicle, we, 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 we contact. Mm -hmm. If it is that we need arm duty and all that, we quickly proceed. So you are at a centre where uh, there is that policing synergy where we we are in tune with all our uh, other ancillary support service providers internally okay. and we are working in Kahoot. Okay. All right. um, at this point we are taking a quick break. You are still watching the Ghana Air Blue Safety Company with me, Lord Harris Udasari. We've been speaking to Superintendent Alexander Obeng of the Motor Traffic and Transport Department here at the monitoring center at the Ghana Police Service. Right after the break, he's going to take us around and then we'll see for ourselves how things are done on the ground. Please stay.
My name is Latif Abubakar, a playwright, CEO of Globe Productions. As a playwright, I led my team to educate the masses on road safety regulations through a theater production titled Men Don't Die. I think that is not what we actually need. We need to be very religious on issues of road safety. Just as we were religious when it came to issues of HIV AIDS by wearing condoms. And we were religious when it came to issues of COVID-19 by wearing masks and washing our hands regularly. I think that we should also be religious when it comes to road safety by wearing our seat belts and obeying the road safety regulations. I'm glad to be part of the Ghana Web Road Safety Campaign Project. Do the right thing, save a life. God bless you. Welcome back. You are still watching the Ghana Web Road Safety Campaign. My name is Lord Harris Udasari. Today we are speaking to Superintendent Alexander Obain of the MTTD. Now, um, Superintendent Obain, you are telling us about how this is going to, one, help reduce the road accidents, catch uh, culprits and criminals in real time. But essentially, what would you want the public to know at this point? I see on the camera different places across the country. What, what do you want people to know now? I think, first of all, policing is structured nationwide, Ghana. And I said earlier, you know, the uh, 18 police regions, we are there. And it is obvious that uh, where we are, any support system that we need to detect should also be present. So these technological devices are also deployed nationwide. And that is why. Uh, even in real time, uh, you are looking at, for example, in Ashanti region, Kumasi, it is rainy. Yeah. Uh, but you look at Accra and, and uh, Tema area, it is uh, uh, not raining. And it's, uh, it gives us a sense of hope that police, in addition to what we are doing, uh, being supported with capacity to in real time monitor from a remote uh, back office like here, this center. And it's, I believe it gives assurance to the general public, uh, and in particular, vehicle owners and motorists and commuters and pedestrians alike that Ghana is present with them and has positioned herself to increase uh, uh, the, the, the high sense of detection, mm -hmm. and I'm saying apprehension, and imposition of sanctions on those who will infract on the law with impunity. And it's natural that if you have a country with such a policing system, over time, you begin to see people behaving with decorum, vehicle owners ensuring that their vehicles are safer before they hand them over to licensed persons and those who have custody of the vehicle as motorists who also always comply with in traffic. Uh, road rules and in the end it ends up enhancing public health and safety particularly to road users i.e. the vehicle occupants and pedestrians and above all with the current increase in uh, road crashes we will begin to see reduction. You begin to see also people behaving responsibly on our roads. 
and you see also moderation in speech and you see people complying with particularly road rules that when not complied with compromise public health and safety so uh, it's clear that here we are observing all critical locations where police currently is capable of looking and train and deploy police officers here who are monitoring and compiling on the spot investigation to determine violations and document same and forward same for other teams to pick it up with DVLA and to also invite lookout, arrest and impound offenders who uh, otherwise in the past would not have been uh, forthcoming and it's all well and good. I'm saying that is important is that all of us must know that police is now positioned to gather photographic and video evidence which are physical which we can go and play back and for even the court to have a feel of what you are observing and I think it should send clear signal to all of us that at all public places we must use such places with high sense of responsibility and decorum as dictated by state laws and with this project we are looking at laws that has permitted Ghanaians to own property called vehicles which has imposed safety responsibility on them in terms of vehicle care servicing and handing over same to responsible drivers to use and for drivers to when they are given to also ensure that they comply with road use uh, rules and ensure that they drive to protect one another and not drive to compromise the safety of others by infracting on the road law that in the end ends up in all manner of crashes and associated deaths and injuries and damage to properties. What you see behind me are real-time footages of things happening across the country. Now the backroom staff here are the surveillance and monitoring units at the Ghana Police Service Headquarters are regulating and watching everything that's happening here. So basically everything that happens across the country, if any criminal activities or accidents, they see it real time and then the help can be given as and when it is required. My name is Lord Harris Udasari and this has been another edition of the Ghana Web Real Safety Campaign Series. Do join us for our subsequent ones. And even before I leave, like the backroom stuff are doing here with the eagle eyes here, when you see something on the roads, being it's poor roads, bad lighting, or indiscipline by drivers and other road users, take a footage, send it to us on our social media platforms. On Facebook is Ghana Web TV, on Twitter is the Ghana Web. <laughs>